Al Spatch's Ultimate Edition Ultimate Werewolf from Bezier Games. This is one of the biggest party and convention games to ever grace the board gaming existence. Originally titled Mafia, a game where you sit down around the campfire and have a card or have something written on a piece of paper, your roles, and basically this heads up 7-up from when you're a child, if you remember those types of games, where people are going to pick on you by eliminating you throughout this little cooperative social type game. The werewolves are the bad guys and the villagers are the good guys and there's a bunch of classes in between and there's a day phase in which people are going to discuss who among them is evil and they're going to try and kill that person or people and then at night when everybody's asleep closing their eyes these specific types of classes are going to wake up specifically the werewolves and eliminate a villager in the group the werewolves win if only werewolves are left and the villagers win if all of the werewolves have been eliminated of course there is a ton of different changes as to the different types of classes you can add in the game there's vampires there's boogeymen there's blobs and all other types of things the game is now massive in size what originally started with maybe 10 to 15 characters from a specific game has now branched off into this ultimate style game that has over 80 90 characters including tons of expansions and artifact cards there's a ton of stuff going on now with this game some people might be over it now because they've seen so much of it or played so much but it doesn't matter because they at one point definitely enjoyed this game because it brought so much to the table for so little all you needed was a stack of cards and a great narrator and you could play this game that could last for a huge amount of time and can play at a substantial amount of players i'm talking 64 player count games an amazing thing that no other game has done before and has and is going to do in quite some time I imagine. So what are we doing in this video today? Well in this video I'm going to discuss with you my top five favorite werewolf cards and before that I'm going to go into detail with quite a lot of different character choices that there are in the game now as of this moment as well as what they kind of do give you a good glance at all the different types of werewolf cards and the good guys humans the mixture of neutral cards talk about werewolf legacy a bit and then like I said we'll discuss my top five and then you yourself should leave a comment down below based on the ones you've heard or maybe one you want to make up and uh, what you think would be a great addition to this game so to, to, to stop and to just go back and uh, talk about uh, all the different things let's go ahead and head back down so you can see everything this game has and I'll go into detail with all the different types of cards and finally I'll show you what I think so here we are with Ultimate Werewolf. Everything is going to be included here. This is my full-on collection of all the things they've made so far, except for Werewolf Legacy, which I have, but I did not include in this because there's some spoilers and whatnot, and I want you guys to enjoy that game all on its own. There's mainly the classes here, as you see, are also in that game, but there are some unique ones in there that I didn't go ahead and show you guys. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can check out my Ultimate Werewolf videos on here. But for everything else though, we're going to be talking about Ultimate Werewolf and everything here that is included. I've got my top five favorites down here, but first let's go ahead and discuss the basic idea of the game. For those of you who have never played Ultimate Werewolf, who have no idea what I'm talking about, Mafia does not ring any bells. Very, very simple. Night phase and a day phase. During the night phase, the werewolves wake up and they kill somebody. During the day phase, everyone wakes up and they nominate a player by voting to defend themselves. And then they will also vote if that person is going to, to be executed or not. And you just try to have one side win over the other. And that's the basic idea of the game. I've explained it already before, but just so you get a good idea before we go into all of these different things. Uh, so let's talk about them all. First of all is the villagers. Villagers are worth one point apiece. And as a narrator, you want to kind of gauge the difficulty of the game based on these point scores. So plus one compared to minus six for the werewolves. That means for every six villagers, you're going to include one werewolf. However, when you change the game up, it's all these different characters and classes have their own different pluses and minuses. Uh, but villagers, nevertheless, are worth a singular blue point, and uh, werewolves are minus six red points. So uh, that is the basic class of the game. The villagers don't have any specific bonuses or anything like that. They're going to just wake up during the day phase, and they're going to vote on who they think among them is a bad guy. Werewolves are similarly the same thing, but they get an additional bonus of waking up at night and eliminating one of the villagers here. Villager cards are always going to be in blue and werewolf cards will always be in red. They're the basic colors of the game, blue and red, but 
but there are a ton of different colors. So let's first talk about all the additional villagers in the game that you can go ahead and select to play or add to the game. We'll go very quickly, I have a lot of cards here. Uh, you have the Beholder on the first night, you get to learn who the Seer is, and who is the Seer? The Seer is actually a character that is going to let you uh, look each night at a player to see if they are a villager or a werewolf. Uh, you're going to have somebody like the pacifist who will always vote for players to survive. The martyr, once per game, you can take uh, the place of any player who was lynched. So before uh, they get lynched, you can say, I'm the martyr and I'm going to save them. Aris here, you can choose a player each night to see if that player is not a werewolf or a villager. Troublemaker, once per game, they can stir up trouble and make two votes happen during a daytime phase, which can benefit the villagers. The mayor, his votes count as double, and usually you can use this card by giving it to a player as part of a scenario or a campaign. Or you could also just make somebody the mayor, but uh, in, in general, mayor is usually used for a scenario. A lichen, you're a villager, but everybody sees you as a werewolf. The mason, mason, uh, you know who, are the, who all the other masons are, and there's multiple masons in the game that you can go ahead, and there's at least two, maybe even three of them you can use. The priest, once per night, you can choose, once per game, you can choose a player to be protected, that player may not be killed at night. Cupid attaches two players together, and then... Those players are going to work together, whether they're villagers and a villager and a werewolf, werewolf and a vampire, uh, two villagers, two werewolves. If either one dies, so does the other, and the only way they win is if the last two players remaining or their team uh, meets their victory conditions. The seer, like I said, lets you see players. The ghost, uh, you die on the first night, and you communicate to the village through single letter clues, no names or initials. N. S. The tough guy, he dies, but not the first time he dies, he dies the night after. Or a seer, if the seer dies, this is the new seer. PI, once a game, you can choose um, a player and you'll be told if, it's, if their neighbor is a werewolf or not. The revealer, each night you can choose to kill a player. If that player is a werewolf, he's eliminated. If he is not, you're eliminated instead. Uh, Virginia Wolf. This is an ex one, of the, one of the expansion cards. Most of the ones in green I have are expansion cards. The first night, choose a player to be afraid of you. Uh, if you are eliminated, that player is eliminated as well. Insomniac, each night learn if at least one of your neighbors has taken a night action. Uh, Frankenstein's monster. When a special character is, in, is eliminated, you get their power. Wow. The mummy, each night pick a player to be hypnotized. That player will vote the same way you do. That's pretty nice during that lynching phase. The count, the, night, the first night you're told how many werewolves are on each side of the village. So if you got three people here and three people here and you're yourself, uh, the narrator will go, oh, there's one there and there's two there. Some, something like that. Uh, the thing that goes bump in the night. Each night, tap a player that is sitting immediately next to you. So you have to, have to tap somebody every night. However, other players can also try and tap as well to make them people think that they're actually the, the thing that you are. So that could be good or bad. Depends on how you look at it, I guess. You can eliminate a player at night once a game as the Huntress. Uh, the Mad Bomber. If you're eliminated, the players immediately to your left and right are eliminated as well. Uh, the Mentalist. Each night you may point two players and are told if those players are on the same team or not. That's pretty cool. Mystic Seer. Each night point to a player and learn their exact role. Super powerful. Plus nine points to the village. That's even more powerful than a werewolf on their own. The Moderator cards given to the Moderator. And there's two of these extra cards, which are basically blanks. So you can make your own. So if you have a good one, and I have haven't seen it or it's not here you should tell me so I can make up my own rules I play this game enough the idiot you always vote for players to die <laughs> and then of course there's the prince uh, if you're lynched you survive and reveal yourself you can't lynch me I'm the prince uh, the bodyguard every night you choose a different player to be protected if that player dies instead you do the old man you may you you will die on night X where X is the number of werewolves in the game plus one if there's three werewolves you die on the fourth night regardless which I guess tells people how many Werewolves there are, maybe? The Leprechaun. Each night you may redirect werewolf's attacks to a player sitting next to their target. So if Grant were to die, uh, I could then as the Leprechaun say, I'd rather have it be the person next to him. Mean. Diseased. If you're attacked by werewolves, they don't get to feed the next night because you just made them have food poisoning. <laughs> um, and then we have the werewolf, uh, ba the bad guys, uh, the werewolf special classes. Like the wolf cub. You wake up with other werewolves, and if you die, the werewolves feed twice the next night. Wow. Makes people hungry. It's worth eight po negative eight points instead of the negative six a normal one's worth. The sorcerer. Each night you look for the seer. If you, um, you win if the werewolves win. So you can tell the werewolves who the seer is if you find her. The wolf man. You wake up with the other werewolves, but uh, the seer sees you as a villager. Wow, that's powerful. Minus nine points. Uh, the minion. You know who the werewolves are and vice versa. 
said, but you don't wake up with them at night. So they're, you're on their team, and you know who they are, but you don't get to wake up and choose a target with them. Oh, and there's a bunch of different types of werewolves. Uh, the Fruit Brute, each night wake up with the werewolves. If you're the last of the game, you do not get eliminated. Um, e were uh, Wolverine, each night wake up with other werewolves. If you're the closest werewolf to the target, the player hears a metallic sound. Uh, the Fang Vase. The first night, wake up with the werewolves. While there are other werewolves in the game, do not wake up with them on some secret nights. Dire Wolf. Each night, wake with the other werewolves. The first night, choose a player to be your companion. You're eliminated if that player is eliminated. It's like a Cupid werewolf. The Big Bad Wolf. Each night, wake up with other werewolves. If you're still in the game, the werewolves may eliminate two adjacent players. Minus nine. Very, very powerful, the Big Bad Wolf. Dream Wolf. You don't wake up with other werewolves until a werewolf has been eliminated. Once one goes, then you get to wake up and fight with them. The Teenage Werewolf. Wake up with other werewolves, and you must say werewolf or wolf at least once per day. So you're, you're forced to basically say the word werewolf or wolf. Those are all the spe special types of werewolf um, minions. And then we have vampires. They're basically just like werewolves, and they're minus, six, uh, minus seven, but they're an additional class in the game that does additional, that can do an additional kill. So werewolves wake up, kill a player. Now vampires wake up and choose a player. Majority vote. Um, so they're basically just an extra werewolf class. Then you've got these guys here, which are kind of um, mixes. Maybe they're were part werewolf, part vampire, part werewolf, part vi vi villager. The cursed. You are a villager unless you're attacked by werewolves, in which case you become a werewolf. Bloody Mary. If you die by a werewolf, uh, uh, so if you die, each night kill either a villager or a werewolf based on if you are hung or attacked. Nostradamus. The first night, protect, uh, predict which team will win. If you're alive at the end of the game and you predicted accurately, you win. So kind of on his own team right there. Sasquatch. You are on the villager team unless a day ends without a lynch. Then you switch teams and join the werewolves. So if the villagers aren't doing their job, you become a bad guy. Uh, there's classes that win directly all on their own. Here are these four examples I have for you, like Count Dracula. Each night you pick a player to be your wife, and if you make it through a day and night cycle with three wives still alive in the game, you win. The zombie. Each night you eat somebody's brains. Players who have eaten their brains can't vote, and if everybody has eaten, lost their brains, the zombie wins. The boogeyman. Each night if werewolves don't agree on a target quickly, you choose a target. You win if all night active players are eliminated. And the blob. Each night... Uh, the player to your right of the blob is absorbed. If all players are part of the blob, you win. So four unique classes that basically make you win all on your own, regardless of what else is going on. Um, and then there's these last ones here. These ones here are a mix of different things, like the cult leader. You can start turning people into a cult. Uh, it functions similar to these guys over here. The doppelganger, choose a player on the first night. If that player dies, you steal their, their character. The hoodlum, choose two players on the first night. You win if they are dead and you're not at the end of the game. The tanner, your job's horrible and you want to die. You win if you die. <laughs> the lone wolf, wake with the other were werewolves, but you only win if you're the last player left alive. Very hard indeed. Chupacabra, each night choose a player. If that player is a werewolf, he dies. If the werewolves are dead, you kill any other players. So he eats werewolves to the point where he starts eating other players. And then the drunk, you're a villager until the third night when you wake up and you realize what your real role is, which could be anything based on how the moderator predicts it. Those are all the classes I have for Ultimate Werewolf, minus five. Now, you might not even know my top five now if you're really into the game, uh, which ones I've set aside. Maybe you don't, though, which we'll talk about in a second here. The last thing I want to talk about are these artifact cards. This is a completely separate expansion, which gives you a bunch of artifact cards. And as a narrator, you can just deal them out how you want. All the losers get one. The winning teams get one. The MVP gets one. And they just do different things. They're going to have two types of... Um, Cards, whether it be a green one or an orange one. If it's green, it's played at night. If it is orange, it plays during the day. You raise your hand and simply say, I want to use the card. The narrator goes over and reads it and does whatever it says. Some of them are hidden. Some of them stay out and are revealed in play. Other ones will be played instantly. It just depends. You have one of them that literally does nothing. It's, it's a really sad card. Um, Choose two players and have each of them reveal their artifact card, which works with other artifact cards. The Claw of the Werewolf. You join the werewolf team, keeping any ultimate werewolf power you have. The, the Cloak of the Prince. Your first lynch, lynch, uh, lynching attack fails. I think you get the idea, right? The Idiocy Cape. You have to vote to kill people. Uh, each night you wake with the Seer as the Eye of the Beholder. Really good. So on and so forth. A ton of different cards here, though, to go in. I, I name them all, but... My voice is slowly dying and I don't have time to do it all, but it is a lot of fun to include artifacts. It's a nice way I like to give winners 
a card. So it'll give them a little bit more of an edge. Or maybe the person who died first during the night in different ways. But it's artifacts. You can utilize them however you so choose. Um, and of course, there's making your own. And then just the moderator card for those of you that want, if you want to add this into the deck when you shuffle, deal them out. The person who's the moderator reveals it. It's like, okay, I'll be the moderator for this game. All right. Now let's talk about my top five favorite werewolf cards. And... Um, then I want you to tell me below in the comments what your favorite werewolf card is. So that what I gave you is basically the complete list of all werewolf or ultimate werewolf cards in existence, or at least all of the ones I know about. If I, if you know any more, tell me so I can get them. I really want to have all of them. I want to catch them all basically, but except for the five I didn't show you or talk about because these are my top five werewolf cards, which I'll explain now and why I think so. Uh, there is a tie for first and second place. They kind of intermingle based on the type of cards they are, but nevertheless, number five is the Spellcaster. The Spellcaster each night is able to choose a singular player and make them be quiet for the next daytime phase. Basically, the Spellcaster has the ability to silence players that are talkative, and in which case, it changes the way the game works. Now, a spellcaster in general doesn't do all that much in any basic game where players aren't that talkative or whatever. But when you have alpha gamers like myself, the spellcaster can say, Michael's speaking way too much. I'd rather hear what other people have to say. Or maybe perhaps I think he's a werewolf, so I'm going to make him be quiet so that everybody else will have a chance to input. It kind of gives... I, I always include the spellcaster regardless of the game because it always gives... Um, everyone a chance to talk because players that are usually the most talkative will be silenced for the most part. Sometimes a silent player who barely speaks will be silenced, which can be interesting as well. But overall, it just gives you a lot of power as a silencer without giving any game power. So you don't have any specific power to uh, enact on other players. But removing that one player from one round might just do the trick. Another thing that's interesting too is when you're being voted on and you're silenced, it's really, really hard to defend yourself. Mm -hmm and you people doing sign, sign language and explaining and gestures and all that. Hilarious. Awesome. I love the silencer. So much fun. Now, number four is the hunter. The hunter is plus three as opposed to just the plus one. That's because if he dies by getting eaten or by being hung, he can shoot somebody at the last second. So he can basically kill one player the moment he dies. No one can talk to you. You just simply must select a player and they're gone. And you're on, of course, the good guys team. All of the cards so far I've showed you are on the good guys team. With the hunter, though, when you select a target, you're not exactly 100% sure most of the time. Unless maybe somebody was singling you out to try and get rid of you because they knew you were a good guy. In which case, you can shoot that person right back. The hunter has had some really great moments. we be Kobe shooting his three-pointer at the very end of the game. The last, you know, you need two more points and bam, he scores it. The hunter does that same thing in the game as well. I select... Callie, and Callie's the last werewolf, and she dies, and you win the game. Oh, it's so gratifying when that happens. It can also be the exact opposite, where you select the one person left on the villagers team that would have made the difference between them surviving or not. So the hunter has this double-edged sword it's going for him. Another extra thing that the hunter can do is basically, as people are choosing to hang you, you can go, I'm the hunter, and if I'm hung, I'm going to choose the person who nominated me and shoot them. It's a good bluff as well, because if you're not the hunter, you can pretend like you are. And depending on the type of rules in which you play, whether you can say your rules or not, or you can say, if something ha bad happens to me, I'm going to make something bad happen to you. There's that threat looming at all times when the hunter is in play. Super fun. Great. Number four is definitely going to be the hunter. My number three is called the old hag. And I don't know why I like this card so much. People really dislike this card in a lot of ways. Every night, it makes somebody get up and walk out the room. Um, they don't come back until the next day phase. That protects a player, but can also protect the wrong players. If you send a werewolf out and there's only one werewolf in play, no one gets eaten. And then we find out some good information. Or you send away the seer, now the seer can't gain any more information. And they actually have to get up and leave the room, which is the one sad part about it. I think it'd probably be better if like, you had some noise canceling headphones or something like that. And uh, that player would just be unable to be picked because it's not really fun to have somebody actually have to leave a room and wait for like 10 minutes before they can come back in. But other than that, it's a really cool, interesting card that changes the dynamic of the game. And that is the only character you'd actually have to add to the game to make it very uh, viable. Old Hag is fun, really enjoyable. A lot of my friends enjoy playing with this as well. And usually I'm the one that has to go walk outside. So I do feel the sadness of that card in a lot of ways, but overall, I enjoy it quite a bit. Now, I have a tie for first and second. We have a, I have a good guy card and a bad guy card. And for me, it's all about power 
and control in the game, and these two have that. The Witch has a healing potion and a killing potion. The healing potion will protect somebody from being killed, and then that saves you one night of the werewolves eating on you. And it also, she also has the ability to choose a player to die, like the Hunter. Now, of course, just like the Hunter, you're not guaranteed to get the right person. And just like the, um, like the PI or like the bodyguard, you can save one person once, which may be the person that you should, should choose or not choose. And in a lot of ways, you want to choose the first person on the first night. It'll give you an extra day to have everybody working together to find out where those werewolves are. But the witch, she is so powerful. Having two special abilities to use throughout the game, protecting yourself along with, or, or, or somebody else that you feel is even more viable. And then if you can figure out one where the bad guy is, only you need to know and you can just go pff, dead. Powerful. Love it. The other option for first or second place is the Alpha Wolf. Now, I like being the werewolf. Only problem is, I'm generally nominated to be killed. So, uh, if I'm the werewolf, I go I go, go down pretty easy. And if I'm the villager, I go down pretty easy. Just the more you play this game, the more people know you're good at it, the more likely you're going to be selected to be With the Alpha Wolf, once per game, follow the elimination of a werewolf. Following the elimination of a werewolf during the uh, day phase, so if somebody was able to lynch one of your friends, you can turn the werewolf's target of that night into a werewolf instead of killing him or her. So let's pick Callie. But instead of her dying because Brad died last night, uh, Brad died yesterday, we will turn her into a werewolf. So now she has her power as well as being a werewolf. Super, super good, especially if you know who the seer is was a werewolf or maybe a witch gives a lot of change to the game and this is of course a minus nine which is one of the highest cards in the game for a werewolf and as long as you're balancing the decks they all work pretty pretty well but those are my top five favorite werewolf classes spellcaster hunter old hag witch and the alpha wolf i bet you didn't think i'd pick a scary uh, wolf one but i do like the werewolves it's just very often i am i don't live long enough to experience it and most of the time now i'm a narrator so Overall, those are pretty much all the cards that I talked about for Ultimate Werewolf and my top five choices. I'm curious now what your favorite werewolf card or cards are. If you want to leave a comment in the description below or in the comment section below, go ahead and let me know. I'm curious as to why as well, because I would like to start adding more of these cards. Some of them never even added before because they just didn't seem like they'd be fun. Maybe with your explanation, it would change my, my mind as well as Usually I don't play with more than 20 people, so a lot of cards like vampires and stuff like that, the, the ones that require a lot of players, I usually don't in intentionally add all those up, especially because it gets crazy with the narration. Um, as well as if you have a werewolf card that you've thought of or that your playgroup plays that is not here, I have two cards that I want to put in my collection of good abilities. If you have two that you could suggest to me, I will make them into the on this card and I will use them in my, in my next playgroup. So that would be uh, very, very helpful. But anyway, thank you for taking a look at my top five as well as my explanation of pretty much all the werewolves cards up until now with Ultimate Werewolf, um, Ultimate Edition by Bezier Games. If you're interested in taking a look at this game, I highly recommend it, especially if you want a game that doesn't require any table space, you can play up to 10 or more players. I think it's like seven or more, but you really want it to be up to like 10. I would definitely suggest taking a look at Ultimate Werewolf. I love, love, love this game. I proposed during this game. I did this whole crazy thing. Anyway, take a look at it now. Down below in the description, Ultimate Werewolf.